Retro Future. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ponsert, and this is probably a video I should have made a lot sooner, which includes announcing my new comic S36 The Call Girl and my first novel The Ranch in a Machine with Wonderful Cover Art uh, by Starringer. And uh, yeah, so it's been out since September. I don't know why I never made a video. Uh, I've been very busy. As a matter of fact, I'm already working on other stories and I'm also working on the second novel. So, yes, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I've also written various blogs. They're on the new website, www.associationofishtar.com. And uh, this is where you can also find the written form of this blog if you want to inspect it closer. This is likely my last blog for the year, so what would be more fitting than to talk about my crown achievement, the publication of my first novel, The Ranch in the machine which is by the way now on discount on amazon for the remainder of december so go get it link is down in the description so this is my first book my first steampunk Avalon cosmic horror whatever you want to label it let me know what you think so anyway what did i learn from writing my first book and what should you an aspiring writer be mindful of when writing one point one just start writing over the years i learned to distinguish writers from people who say they want to write a book writers write which sounds very obvious but how often have you heard aspiring writers talking about how they want to write a book they spend years building their awesome super unique totally original world and how it's going to be better than jjr martins etc nothing is less interesting than hearing a person talk about a fictional world of one's own creation after all what's the point of learning about a location you'll never get to visit how about you know, start writing the story and making people want to visit your world instead of just writing about it. All those years building the world could have been spent on working on the book itself and honing one's skill as a writer. For me, one day I just sat down, started writing with a few goals in mind, which was one, the book needs to be an introduction to the multiverse of AOI. It would go from mundane to batshit insane. And three, it needs to contain some of the case files from the series that were already publicly available and still are, by the way, on the website I mentioned before. And that's all the preparation I made before going into this. I picked up one of the antagonists from the series, case file S36, and let the plot develop from there. And it worked. People enjoyed the plot and characters, especially Alboro grew out to become very popular with the readers. And no, I did not spend a year working out his backstory, like making notes about what his favorite flavor of crayon was as a kid, for example. His backstory was what the story required it to be. No more, no less. When I started, he was just a name. By the end, he was a fully developed character with his own goals and shortcomings. This is also very important. Write short stories. So, okay, I lied when I said I had barely done any preparation. I wrote well over a few dozen short stories by the time I started writing the novel. And no, I don't mean lore. I mean stories in the form of the case files, which can be found on the website. Not only are short stories a good exercise in A, learning to write, and B, learning how to finish a story. Seriously, if you cannot finish a short story, how do you expect to finish a whole book? Writing short stories is not just about skill, but also mentally adjusting oneself to say it is good enough. Because, as I am recording my own audiobook, I am confronted with my own writing style at times. And while I'm still proud of the novel as a whole, sometimes I come across a sentence where I'm like, yeah, it could have gone better, especially in my short stories. But that's all part of the writing process. If you want to become a serious writer, you can't just write one book. You have to prepare to write another. It makes your book just another stepping stone. A second important reason is that short stories can be a proof of concept. Do my ideas make for good stories? storytelling? Is this something that people want to read more of? Is the world building doing what it is supposed to do? And moreover, do I enjoy writing this? You have to spend 19,000 words on a character and a situation. If you cannot manage writing 3,000 words, well, you get the idea. 
For me, writing these short stories has been invaluable. Not only do some of the most beloved characters of the series originate from these case files, like Igraine and the Call Girl, through these stories I discovered the potential of many of the concepts. When you explain fiction to friends, you may have received questions you have not considered before. Again, you can answer such questions by resolving these in short stories. Short stories can also provide opportunities. Some magazines allow submissions from your extended universe, thus you are able to introduce people to your world and style of writing. That brings me to point number three, read out loud. I'm often complimented for being an easy to read author. Uh, one way I achieve that is by reading all of my stuff out loud when making revisions. And yes, I do use different voices for each character as I read. That way I can adjust dialogue accordingly. Most importantly is that it allows me to discover like tongue twisters, hard to pronounce word combinations or overall sentences that once spoken out loud don't make a lot of sense. Especially in an age where people prefer audiobooks, sentences that flow well off the tongue are important. Also I have software that has text to speech and I found it very useful. Not only did I notice mistakes or bad flow. Despite the terrible voice, I still found myself getting engaged in my own writing, which was a boost in my confidence that I achieved what I set out to do. If you don't have text-to-speech, maybe you can ask a friend to do the terrible reading voice for you. Point number four, research. Yes, research because I love history, I write steampunk. My definition of the steampunk genre is cyberpunk in the past. When I write my stories, I let science fiction class with actual history. And for that reason, I tell my artist I want costuming to be at least 80% authentic. And for this, I actually research the topics I discuss. Does this mean if I can't find any sources, I don't write about it? Sometimes. However, I spent many evenings going down rabbit holes when I felt I needed more information, like on the history of the British police, which turned out to be a treasure trove. Not only did I learn that the police forces were organized by borough, but they also used to be firefighters and sometimes even street cleaners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, can you imagine requesting a constable to clear a drain for you? Uh, the same goes for developing the background of the association uh, and Associate 321 in particular. Uh, a former slave who escaped, joined the US Navy, afterward migrated to Liberia and after an incident joined the West Africa squadron before going to Brazil. And yes, I can justify all of that with historical facts. When it comes to contemporary mainstream fiction, I believe there's an obvious lack of curiosity on behalf of the creators who are only informed by mainstream media and discourse, especially when it comes to the 19th century. Uh, there are definitely a lot of people who, uh, because they read Charles Dickens, they know everything there is to know about that period of history. That being said, doing research is a time sink, but a rewarding one. You often discover facts you wouldn't even have considered otherwise and will enrich your fiction immensely. 5. Kill your darlings. Not much of new wisdom there, but after it's a dark reality of its inevitability. KYD or Kill Your Darlings refers to the process of selecting what goes into the story and what must be removed or left out. Now, this might shock some readers, so <laughs> click for it a little bit in the timeline if you don't want to know about this. So yeah, originally for those who read the book, The Dog Old Boy, yeah, I, I was originally going to, to, kill, to kill that poor thing off. Um, and I, I had like this whole metaphor in my mind about humanity's place in the universe and it would have been followed up by a major character moment for Igrain, but I, I had to scrap it. I, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't kill the, couldn't kill the doggy. Couldn't do it. Anyway. Our direction. Not entirely related to the novel, but it's when I got my first taste of it. And I, by now, I created my first comic, again, S36 The Call Girl. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely hope to, to, to make more. Um, and I, I, I wanted a special cover. Uh, so I had to commission an artist, uh, create instructions, find references, make sketches, uh, and describe what all the characters look like. And... Eventually, I will likely do a separate video in the future on this topic. But um, yeah, uh, that, that was something that uh, I need to do. And, and I also, by the way, made sketches when uh, I didn't know how to 
describe something or didn't know what to how to describe things I I, I started sketching things out and trying to you know what do I want these things to to show and when when, the, when you see the shapes and I'm a very visual thinker so when I see something visually manifest you know it, it comes to life more and you, you start to, oh this reminds me of this and that and that type of character and you know so yeah art direction don't underestimate it and uh, yeah do learn do get a, a sketch pad like uh, you know a, a proper one that not one that's broken has a broken screen but it, it, it this has been an invaluable tool for me um it's expensive but uh i i love it um it's great so yeah editing okay this is something that writers should talk a lot more about when people talk about writing be it in blogs or videos they talk about characters plot stories and the character creation process but editing that is where most of your time is going to be sunk into especially as a dyslectic i'm lost without spell checkers personally i use grammarly in my browser then there is the importance of beta readers and finding reliable editors there goes a lot of work into getting things right and efficiency is very important not just when you're working with deadlines but also to remain motivated so figuring out what strategy works for you is important so one major change i'll make is to focus on completing a rough draft of my second novel before getting into serious editing unlike my first time around and then this this should would have led into my next topic however there's something i want to emphasize real quick i already working on an audiobook of the range in the machine a matter of fact the first three chapters are already on youtube you can find them in the link in the description uh, so if you're considering buying my book um, you know give a uh, listen to the first few chapters I'm, i want to do it like per chapter on, on youtube eventually um but uh yeah it, it might also eventually become available on on audible um however the thing with audible is the return policy that amazon has there which uh, allows people to return like any book they are listened to like between two weeks or something and a lot of people say oh yeah it's great you know you get like free audiobooks the problem is you're stealing from the people who recorded that you piece of sh Okay, you're not screwing over Amazon, you're screwing people like me over. Okay, stop it! So, compatibility issues. When working on an editor, make sure you have uh, the same software versions like your, your, your editor has, seriously. When I was trying to get feedback from my editor on, on, uh, on, my, uh, doc, uh, on my Word document, uh, in various places, spaces had disappeared, so all the work she has done had been for naught. Um, so it apparently had to do with that we were using different types of Microsoft Office that caused that bug, we don't know. Um, so yeah, make sure you are working with the same version, same software, etc. To, to, to prevent these things from happening. Uh, next time we're gonna try to do open office. We used Google Documents this time, which I also like, but Google Documents isn't suitable for large documents. So then you would have to do it by chapter, and this is not useful. You know, you want to have everything because you have to make a layout. You want everything to be in one document with one layout, so you don't get like all matter of of issues with the formatting. So yeah. Uh, next time we're gonna try open office uh, when my next novel is completed i hope I, I i hope to get it done by june is that is that realistic i want to be uh, be short like this this is a this is a beast i want it to be shorter next time i want to have like nineteen thousand. next time maybe even shorter but i i don't think that's gonna happen but we'll see anyway uh so yeah Talking about software, what else I used is a manuscript writing software. Uh, I use Scrivener. Now, a lot of people use different software. Um, I thought Scrivener was popular, or at least that's the one I got the most ads for. But uh, a lot of people are using uh, other forms, so it's worth doing some research into that. I'm pretty happy with Scrivener. My major issue is that um, the spell checker could be better that's that's one of my major ones but um and, and grammarly is not compatible with the software programs for now at least so um it has not been a major hindrance i must admit uh i use a, a scrivener to make like rough drafts 
Then I copy paste it into Google Documents so I can use Scrivener and share it with other people because that's also one thing. A lot of these programs don't have good sharing opportunities. Like they have software that you that allows you to export it in a file that you then can send to your editor who also needs to have the same manuscript writing software, by the way. So there, there's always an issue there. Um, but yeah, then I, uh, it, after copy pasting it in Google Docs, I would copy paste it back into Scrivener and problem solved, really. Um, so yeah, not really an issue. And then I would compile it there. I made a video on Scrivener and, and review. This is an older version, by the way. There is an update which has already improved the spell checker immensely. So uh, there's that. But yeah, uh, it helped me a lot. It saves you a lot of effort, time and frustration uh, if you know how to use it. So yeah. Now, after point nine, we get to my last point for this video. 10 which is the question am i done now is 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 this done is this a complete work no 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 unfortunately it is not um once you have finished that final sentence you go into the editing process this is a long long process then when that all of that is done you have formatted it uh you you had the layout done um the title is done and formatted. You finally uploaded it to Amazon. It's finally been approved. Then comes the marketing circus. And I am, unfortunately, I am not good in that. Uh, my sales figures are, well, barely non-existent, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, if you want to support me on my channel, you know, please go to Amazon and buy my book. Uh, it's on discount now for December, as I told you. Uh, next time, well, we'll probably do it in November or January. Uh, that would be then January 2023, I suppose. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, that's uh, one way you can support me. Uh, of course, uh, like I said, the uh, audiobook versions, I'm doing those per chapter. I hope to do it bi-weekly, but I'll have to see because uh, I'm not just recording my voice there. I'm actually going the extra mile, so please watch them. And uh, yeah, what else do I have to say? Yeah, if you want to support my work, uh, currently I'm commissioning a lot of art because I am working not only on a novel, uh, I also want to create a comic at some point, another one, yes, uh, I'm looking for an artist. So to get to know several artists, I am currently working on a coloring book, which a lot of you seem to really enjoy. So yeah, uh, you have to look forward to that. Uh, if you want previews uh, of my upcoming stuff, uh, please support me on places like Patreon or Subscribestar. Um, for those who are not fond of using such platforms, I also accept PayPal. Uh, please leave me a message uh, if you're interested in that. And I also have a Ko-Fi account where you can buy me a coffee, of course. And also a bit of the thing will go to um, uh, Ko-Fi, of course. Uh, but yeah, uh, PayPal is definitely an option. And if you're somebody who says, yeah, I don't want to purchase anything on Amazon, uh, yeah, just shoot me a link. I can also send you PDFs. I guess I should make a store from the website, see if that is something I can do. Um, but yeah, uh, of course, signed copies. You can also get signed copies uh, of The Wrench in the Machine and the comic book. Um, I, if you buy the comic book and uh, novel together, I will give you a, a slight discount. Um, margins on it aren't great as it is, so I cannot give you that much. But hey, um, I'm just happy that you want to read my stuff. So if you are a fan of my work, if you are somebody who found me through, um, you know, Radio Retro Future for Fallout, and you enjoyed what I wrote there, if you seen some of the short stories on the website or seen some of the audio books that we did on this channel about the Association of Ishtar, go, please support it. And uh, you can join our website to see all the other short stories that we've written. So uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I guess I'm going to bid you adieu. And as always, make things your way. Good night. <laughs>